Hello everyone, welcome to video 13 of chapter 3. In this video, we'll go through a big summary for the simplex method, starting from the canonical form 1. Okay, so um, I will be summarizing the steps of the algorithm. So step 1, you will check the coefficients cj. If all of them are bigger than zero, then you know the minimum has been reached. We can invoke theorem O for optimality criteria. Then you stop. And step two, then we check if there exists a k such that ck is less than zero. In that column, if you look at the coefficients a's, if they are all less than or equal to zero for all the i's, then the minimum value of z is unbounded below, is negative infinity. This um, follows from theorem u unbounded. And then you stop the algorithm. Step three, this is the main step involving the method of simplex algorithm, so you invoke theorem M. Okay. So in this case, you know that there is a CK that's less than zero, and uh, in the column, some A coefficients are positive. Okay. So you want to do a pivoting process, and you have to choose the point for pivoting. So you would choose the column for pivoting K, let's say column number K. This would be the column where the CJ is negative, and if you shall have multiple terms of CJ that are negative, you will pick the one that's most negative, that is, with the largest absolute value. So that is the column, and in order to pick the corresponding row, then you will look at that column, and then you compute the ratio of BI over AIK for all the A's that are positive, find the minimum of this ratio and pick that row, and that's the row S. So your pivoting point is column K, row S. And then you perform the pivoting process. And after the pivoting, you would have a linear programming problem, which is again in canonical form. And now it will have a different basic variable set with one variables changed, and they will have a different basic feasible solution. Okay, and now you go back to step one and repeat. Okay, so the process might have to be repeated once, twice, or multiple times until you stop either here or stop either there. So then um, you have found the minimum or you conclude the minimum is unbounded. Okay, so um, let's take an example. Okay, um, let's look at example. We call this example LP1 and we'll refer to it in later videos. So this is the first example after we have the big summary of the algorithm. We consider the following problem, um, which is listed here in this compact form. The first three equations are the constraints. The first one is the um, objective function. And we see that it's in canonical form. And uh, the basic variables are x1, x2, and x3. And uh, the b's are all positive. And then this is the objective function, which is expressed in terms of the non-basic variables. Okay. So um, this is a problem that um, we would need to um, go through the algorithm, the loop of the algorithm, going through all the steps multiple times. So let's take a look. Okay, so, so um, the first loop, step A, let's look at the objective function. And uh, we see that um, one coefficient is negative, negative 2. 
in front of x4. So um, we would choose this column as the column for pivoting, column number 4. Okay, so once you have decided that, we go to step 1b. Now we need to look at the coefficient of this column here, which we see is 2, negative 1, and 6. And we see that they are not all negative, they are positive terms. Okay. And then you need to pick one of the positive ones to pivot. So now you go to 1c. How do you decide that? Well, you will be computing the ratio of those two um, positive coefficients. So have 10 over 2, which is 5, and the second one is 18 over 6, which is 3. And then I shall find the minimum of these two, which is 3. I put it in red. So you now conclude that. Now I will perform pivoting process with this x4 in, in the row 3 here. Okay, so combining the finding in 1a and 1c, you chose the pivoting point. Okay. So once this point is chosen, that's why here I put it in red, and then you just go through the pivoting process, which um, we have done many times. Um, you Equation 3, for example, you can divide it by 6 to make this 1, and you adjust the other coefficients accordingly. And then you would multiply this with a suitable number and add on top of equation 1 and another one on 2 and another one on 4 to make all these three terms zero so that x4 is the only non-zero term in the column. Okay, So pay attention, this would include also the last one where you have the objective function. Okay, So if uh, you want to practice, you can go ahead and do it by yourself and here I did it, and you get this system, which has some annoying fractions, but they're just numbers. Okay, so you see now I have um, x1, x2, and x4 as uh, basic variables. And the basic solution will be x1 is 4, x2 is 23, x4 is 3. And at that basic solution, the value z is negative 66, where here the value z is negative 60. So we see that we actually make the z smaller by this step. Okay, so um, here I repeated the result from the previous page. After the pivoting, now we again have a linear programming problem, which is in canonical form with basic variable x1, x2, and x4, which is listed here. And now we need to go through the whole process, the, the loop, one more time. Okay, so this is the second loop, step A. Looking into the objective function, we found that there is a negative coefficient, negative 1 here. So this column 5 will be chosen to pivot. And second, and uh, B here, now I'll be looking at the coefficients A here to see that are they all negative. Uh, no, they're not all negative, they are, they are a pos there's a positive term. So step 2C, and then I need to decide among the positive terms which one should I pivot. And here there is only one term that's positive, so you don't even need to compute the ratio, so this will be chosen. Okay, so you will be performing your pivoting process and using the x5 in equation 1 prime as the pivoting point. Okay, so that's why this is red. Okay, so once you have decided where to pivot, then you just carry out the process, okay, which uh, I'll skip the detail. So you would carry it out and make the rest x5 here or 0, so they disappear. And then we get this system here with all these not so pretty fractions, but it's okay, we can deal with them. They're just fractions. Okay. We see that the basic variables are x2, x4, x5. 
the basic solution is x2 is this 97 over 3, x4 is 17 over 3, x5 is 4 over 3, and x1 and x3 are 0. Okay, And at this basic feasible solution, the value z is negative 202 over 3. And we know that this number is more negative than negative 66, so z become even smaller after this step. Okay, so now again we have a LP problem in canonical form. Then we go back to the algorithm step one. This is the loop number three. Okay, we look at the objective function and we check the coefficient. We have one third and two ninths, and they are both positive. So there are no negative terms here. So this is exactly the criterion for optimality. So we invoke theorem O and we say that optimum, the minimum point is found and we stop the algorithm. Okay, so we can give the conclusion, the answer. So the minimum of Z would be the negative of this. So be careful, there's a negative here, 202 over 3, and this value is attained at the basic solution here, that is x1, x3 is 0, and x2, 4, 5 are the corresponding right-hand side. So this is x2, that's x4, and that's x5. Yep, so that's the first example we have using the algorithm that we summarized. Okay, let's um, make some comments. Um, we see that the algorithm, at least for this example, works very well, but uh, um, we could complain and say that, well, th this involves a lot of writing, and uh, I, I, wrote, I would have to write all these x, and which is a bit redundant, and uh, probably a more compact notation would be useful. Okay, so this will be introduced in the next video. So, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.